Hello, I'm here to welcome you with the announcements. Wherever you are on your journey of life and faith, we affirm you and welcome you. The flowers in the sanctuary are in loving memory of Charles Constantine's nephew, Nicholas Koshman. We have two opportunities for a safely socially distanced outside worship by the barn, September 1st and September 13th, both at 6 p.m. Please call the church office or visit the website to sign up for one or both. Bring your chair, your water, your bug spray, and your mask. The new upper room devotionals have arrived. Please stop by the church to pick up or let us know if you need one and we'll drop it off to you. Now, you are invited to settle in and prepare your hearts and minds for this week's worship experience. Thank you. Good morning. Please join with me in the call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make his deeds known to all the people. For he is the Lord, our God, faithful to a thousand generations. With joy and thanksgiving, let us worship God. Ye saints of the Lord, it is laid for your faith in God's excellent word. What more can be said than to you God has said, to who you who for refuge to Jesus have fled? Fear not, I am with thee, O oh, be not dismayed, for I am thy God, and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand, and help by my righteous omnipotent hand. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Gracious God, we seek to open ourselves to you in this moment. We know all too well the failures and limitations that bring us to our knees 
and into your presence. We pray that your Holy Spirit would cause us to look beyond failure and limitation so that we might accept your mercy and forgiveness as the way forward. Work in us to make us more aware of the new creation that comes about because of your relentless love. In Christ we pray, amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ you are forgiven. Amen. the teachings of Christ, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and also with you. Psalm 105, verse 1 through 6, and 23 through 26. God's faithfulness to Israel. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham, and the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes, whose hearts he then turned to hate his people, to deal, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent his servant Moses and Aaron, whom he had chosen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hi, everyone. I'm Miss Carolyn. Today, I would like to speak to you about Love. What is love? I wish I could hear your answers. I'll give you mine. I believe love is a very strong feeling we hold deep in our heart. Who do you love? Parents? brothers, sisters, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, and neighbors, and your pets. And I'm sure the list goes on and on. Well, Jesus wants us to love others as we love ourselves. I'd like to share with you the meaning of love from the Bible. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. How do you show love? Do you show love by helping people? Listening? Carrying groceries? Helping the elderly? Encouraging others? 
I'm sure there are many other ways that you show love. I'd like to read a story about some men walking from Jerusalem to Jericho. I'd like you to decide which man showed love. Once someone asked Jesus what the law meant when it said we must love our neighbors as much as ourselves. Who is my neighbor? He asked Jesus. Jesus told him a story. A man was going from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers who stole everything before leaving him by the road, half dead. Soon, a priest passed by. When he saw the man, he crossed the side of the road and carried on his way. Then a Levite came along. He also hurried on his way without stopping. Nobody wanted to get involved. They were all too busy or too important or too scared to help. Now, the next person came along was a Samaritan. The Samaritans are not friends of the Jews, but when this traveler saw the man lying by the roadside, he, his heart filled with pity. He carefully watched, uh, washed, I'm sorry, and bandaged his wounds before taking him on his donkey to an inn where he gave the innkeeper money to, to look after the man until he was well. Jesus looked at the man who had posed the question and asked when he thought had been a good neighbor to the injured man. The man sheepishly replied, the one who was kind to me, to him. Then Jesus told him, then go and be like him. Now, who do you think, which man showed love? Was it the priest? Was it the Levite? Was it the Samaritan? It was the Samaritan. I'm sure you, you guessed that. Now, keep in mind, the Samaritan did not even know this man, and yet he stopped and helped him. Do you think this pleased Jesus? Yes, yes, I know he, it pleased Jesus. Sure it did. Now, what do we do? Just like Pastor Peter, take a deep breath, let it out. Close your eyes. Dear Father in heaven, we ask you to bless and protect all our children as they return to school. Help them to adjust to the new normal. Keep them safe and healthy. If they slip up and make a mistake, guide them to move on to the next best thing. When faced with a challenge and not sure what to do, they should ask themselves, what would Jesus do? I have faith that you, that you will have an answer. And all God's children said, Amen!
Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Marks of the true Christian. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can separate us from the love of Christ? I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God. From questions to convictions to transformation, St. Paul strongly states that we can be conquerors of all the perils of this world. We can become new beings in Christ, new being in God's service. And how will life be in our new service to God? All these statements are by St. Paul, a person who was initially transformed on the
I'm Caroline MacArthur, an ordained deacon and ruling elder here at South, South Old First Presbyterian Church. I'll be talking about Romans chapter 12, verse 15 today. In Romans chapter 12, Paul includes a list of qualities to strive for in a Christian life. In verse 15, he says, Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. In my Good News Bible, it is written, Be happy with those who are happy, weep with those who weep. Now, if you had asked my younger self what I thought of that quote, I would have dismissed it as being obvious and simplistic. I was brought up by parents who lived this, and I had not much exposure to the reality of competitiveness, envy, greed, judgment of humanity. When people envy another's success, we cannot share in their joy since we are too busy comparing our worthiness against theirs. In this one single simple sounding statement, we can work to be a conduit of God's empathy through compassion for others. We communicate sincere love and concern for another person powerfully by recognizing and joining in their highs and lows. When I'm feeling a strong emotion, either good or bad, one of the first things I do is reach out to a loved one to share my emotions with. The reinforcement in that sharing gives both of us strength. It's pretty easy to share these joys and concerns with those we love. But I, but I think what is meant here is larger than that. Sharing in the joys and concerns of those we might not really want to, be, to feel with and for. Being sincerely glad that someone else succeeded in something you were striving for. Being sincerely saddened by tragedies that you may or may not relate to. Many years ago, my husband had a terrible accident that put him out of commission for almost six months. He couldn't work, the kids were young, and we had just purchased the home with a large mortgage. It was really catastrophic to us at the time. What caused the accident was him doing tricks, a wheelie to be exact, on our son's bike outside our house on a Sunday afternoon. In the following days, weeks, months, we were blessed with love from our friends and neighbors. But also, what I heard often was, what was he thinking? That was a dumb thing to do. And even, I guess he learned his lesson not to do that again. I think the misguided commentary was an expression of relief that it wasn't their worry. The contrast in what people shared with us was noticeable and life-changing. It was then and there that I promised to myself I would make every effort to be sincere in my sorrow and also happiness for others. To be the person who speaks and acts through the love of God and Jesus and come to another side without judgment. I see God's love as all-encompassing, empathetic, completely unselfish. It is my daily challenge to feel God work through me so I can be a reflection of that love and empathy, and truly, sincerely, be able to share in both rejoicing and sorrow with anyone I encounter. Our goal as Christians is to love and lift each other up, all of us, all the time. Thank you. Romans 12, 9. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, Hold fast to what is good. This is pretty basic, right? It almost doesn't seem worth repeating. But as I sat down to consider the lectionary reading for today, I kept coming back to this line. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. You see, far too often, especially now, during these times of growing divisiveness and turmoil, Especially now with the social media algorithms that foster anger and division by exploiting the less developed parts of our brain. In the name of page views and profits, I find myself jumping to the hating of evil part a little too quickly and a little too often. Now maybe hate is too strong of a word and maybe it's too loaded with our own cultural baggage. In the older, abhor evil from the old King James, or the newer, more poetic, run for dear life from evil from the message, are easier to swallow. But nonetheless, if I'm going to be honest with myself and with you, looking for what's wrong with other people is easy. Far too easy. And it can also be a trap. Remember what our Savior said about finding the speck in our neighbor's eye, but not noticing the log in our own eye. 
But it's not just about avoiding our own faults by fixating on those we perceive in others. In fact, fixating on our own faults can be equally problematic. Love doesn't start with criticism of ourselves or others. It can't. Just as we are taught in algebra class, there's an order of operations that must be followed to solve an equation properly. In algebra, we must first address the parentheses, then the exponents, then multiply, then divide, and only then are we able to add and finally subtract. Easy to remember with the mnemonic device that some of you may recall. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. The proper order must be followed or else error is certain. The same is true with love. The love described earlier in Romans in chapter 5, verse 8, where Paul wrote, God proved his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This love, this agape, is the starting point even in the face of sin, even in the face of everything else. And we are called to follow suit in our love of God, in our love of our neighbors, and yes, in our love for ourselves. Now, if we had more time, we could explore the different Greek words for love, eros, agape, storge, philia. But lucky for us, this isn't necessary because we can look at what Paul said this love is, and more importantly, what a loving person does or at least ought to do, right here in this very reading. Being affectionate to one another, outdoing one another in honor, not lagging in diligence, being ardent in spirit, or some would say a fire in the spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in affliction, being devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, pursuing hospitality, even to those who persecute us. Now, sometimes these things are harder than others, pursuing hospitality and blessing those who persecute us, for example, or rejoicing in hope when facing affliction or during a pandemic. But these are the marks of the transformed life that Paul and our Savior Christ is calling us to live. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times when we need to confront evil head on with all of our might, immediately and urgently. But at the same time, we also need to guard ourselves that this confrontation and that this confrontational posture doesn't overtake us because it certainly can and will if we allow it to. Now, last week, P Pastor Kelly asked us to consider what God has placed on our doorstep in this season, calling out for transformation. Meditating on this passage and reflecting on my own life and my own tendency to jump to criticizing others, I know I have my work cut out for me, but I also have faith that God will provide because God loves each and every one of us, no matter what. Amen. Please join me as we affirm our faith. If there is to be peace in the world, there must be peace in the nations. If there is to be peace in the nations, there must be peace in the cities. If there is to be peace in the cities, there must be peace between neighbors. If there is to be peace between neighbors, there must be peace in the home. If there is to be peace in the home, there must be peace in the heart. Lord, let us give ourselves over to the pursuit of this peace, no matter the cost. In Christ's name, amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Jesus prays for us and wants us to pray for others, for the whole church and for the world that God so loves. We pray especially for people who are sick, hungry, lonely, poor, 
or displaced, for the cities and neighborhoods where we live, for people and leaders in all countries, for peace and fairness for all people, for all God's creatures, for clean air, water, and soil, and for the work of the whole church to show and tell the good news of Jesus. Jesus, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, may these gifts from our congregation represent an inner commitment to love you above all else. Bless these gifts, O God, which we offer in response to your steadfast love. As your son Jesus transformed people's lives, so may, may the lives of others be transformed through these gifts, through our love and through our witness. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Christian in my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be a Christian. 
Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Now, as we prepare to go out into the world, either physically or spiritually, may the strength of God pilot us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. May the hand of God protect us. May the word of God direct us. Be always ours this day and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. God protect us. May the word of God direct us. Be always our. Bleh. <laughs>